Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video with Swipe Boss. Quick, which way am I going to enter frame? Can you guess? I mean, I always come in from the right side. The chair is pointing to the right, but maybe I purposely played it that way so that you guys are going to guess that, but really I'm coming for the left. Or maybe I'm doing the double fake. Did you guys figure it out? Ah, it was from the bottom. It was from the floor. I was coming up from the floor the whole time. Fooled you. Fooled you. Of course, you should have known that from the title of this video. Coming up from the floor representing Zero Town. The one-way ticket that I just bought for myself with this unboxing here today. So in this video, we're going to do on this unboxing, we're going to talk about how this book is going absolutely to zero and how I flushed my money down the toilet. And then maybe later on in the video, we can talk about how maybe there is a way to rationalize the emotion I had behind this purchase. But before I get into it, if you guys drop me a like, comment, subscribe, if you're enjoying the content, help support the channel, do us that. Let's get into this boxing here today. Now, I actually have two books inside of this box, a purchase I made from Heritage Auctions, but I'm gonna save the second book for another video because I want to have a separate conversation about that one right there. Let me see my paperwork. Let us get this out. Let us do this. Hold on, guys. And okay. Yeah. Okay, I can pull this up. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. This is a book that I had picked up on Heritage Auctions. You know how it is. Sometimes you're just watching the auctions. You're sitting there, you know, you're doing a little other work. You're not really paying attention. Then you get that little blue, which is like the alert for a, a, an item that you were tracking coming up. And you look at the book and you say, huh, that seems pretty cheap. And you go, meh, I'll just bid. Oh crap, I won. And then you end up doing an unboxing video on your YouTube channel. And with that, without further ado, the book that I picked up that I didn't really put too much thought into is another copy of Avengers number eight, first appearance of King Conquer. This time in a 6.0 grade, a 6.0 grade. Now, the question is, did I just buy myself a one-way ticket to Zero Town? Because as we all know, with everything going on in the news right now with Jonathan Majors, we have no idea if Marvel is going to tank the Kang the Conqueror character. But like the emotional collector I am, I bought this book, not because I think it's going to go to the moon by the time we get to Avengers, Kang Dynasty, Majors or not, maybe they're going to recast him. I bought this book because, yes, I am one of the few people that actually likes Kang the Conqueror. You know how much time I spent looking at this card when I was a little kid? I don't know either, but it was a lot of time. Okay, it was a lot of time. Okay, look at those stats, the power stats, real name unknown. How do they not know his name? Isn't he related to Richards? You know, but there it is right there, Avengers 8. It was foretold in my youth that I was going to be buying this book all of the time. Can't help myself, guys. Look, I mean, look, just all of the characters, okay? I have to have all of their first appearances, High Evolutionary, Enchantress, Mephisto, Leader. I can't help it. I like the villains because I had all of the cards. So I bought this book for emotional reasons. But very, very nice looking 6.0. Presents really well. I mean, no real major flaws with it. Just, you know, a little bit of wear on the signs and not really a bad price overall because I only paid 700 and $80 for it, which to me felt like a pretty good deal at a 6.0 grade. I mean, you guys might be thinking to yourself, this book is absolutely worth zero. I mean, the market seems to think that the book is absolutely worth zero, but I basically paid the same price that I've paid for other Kang the Conqueror books that I bought in less of a grade. And frankly, if the book continues to go down, I will continue to buy the book. If a 7.0 goes to $700, $800, I will buy it then. If an 8.0 goes to $780, I will, or $70, $800, I will also buy it then. And that's where I get to rationalize the emotional side of my comic book collecting, which is to say that I'm averaging down 
on the books that I'm actually purchasing. Ooh, averaging down. What do we mean by that swag? What do we mean? Well, let's dig a little bit into the numbers here and talk about this book that is going to zero town. As you guys can see, this book has been on a fire sale the past handful of months or so. I mean, well, you know, a fire sale, relatively speaking, because actually I did go in and manually count the volume per month of how much this book has been selling. And when Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania came out, there were more copies moving out there in the market. So even after this sort of Jonathan Majors announcement news, it hasn't been that uh, you know more people are selling, although there are a ton of options on eBay at the low grade. But Generally speaking, I felt pretty good about this, you know, considering that after I made my purchase, which is uh, somewhere in this list, you can see right there, $780, 60, that's my copy right there. Uh, shortly after I made my purchase, you know, we can see a bunch of copies. There was a 4.0 that went for 700, basically the same price. Here's a 5.0 that went for 789. Here's a 6.5 that went for 1,020. Here's a 5.5 that went for 930. So again, you know, we always talk about this here on the channel, a lot of price consolidation, price compression, you know, especially in these kind of uh, mid-ish, mid or high grades. You know, look at, I mean, a 4.0 went for 7.28 and then a 5.0 went for 6.80 in the past 30 days. So again, a lot of volatility with this book right now, which to me makes it a good opportunity to pick it up if you're somebody who still believes in the Kang character. Now, let me talk a little bit about this idea of averaging down, just in case you guys are not really familiar with this. And I'm gonna pull up the six, five grades right here because this is gonna be easy math time and I need to do uh, easy math, especially when I'm shooting from the hip here. But here in the 6.5 grade, you know, this is a book obviously spiked up all the way to 2200. Let's say you're somebody who bought this book, you know, uh, just before the crash of it, you know, you're kind of around, I mean, I guess it was 1688, but let, let's just say it's an even 1600, right? right? You, you bought this book, $1,600, and now it's all the way down to a thousand. Well, you could say to yourself, man, you know, it's at 1600. I basically paid two X, uh, you know, when, when looking at swags index, you know, it shows that the, the, the fair market value should really only be around that 2020 price was maybe the $800 range. I definitely overpaid. What can I do about this? Well, you know, if you look at the 1600 purchase right here, and then you decided to pick up uh, say this last heritage auction at a thousand dollars right there. Well, all of a sudden your cost basis into the, both of those books for uh, $1,000 and 1,600 is only 2,600. And then if you divide that by two, well, what do you get? You actually get $1,300. So all of a sudden your average price into the book is 1,300. So you don't need to think about having spent 1,600. And 1,300 is certainly a lot closer to the $800, $900 fair market value that presumably we wanna be around. And then maybe another book will come along and then you can buy another copy at around that $1,000 price point. And then now you have three books and you're into those three books for, you know, effectively uh, 3,600. You divide those by three. Now what is your cost basis? It's around $1,200. So all of a sudden you start to average down, you know, the prices that you have into these books. And eventually you can inch your way closer and closer and closer to what we actually think the fair market value should be. Now, this of course presumes that we are going to have Kang the Conqueror in the future. Now I'm personally of the opinion and again, this is my opinion, I have nothing to back this up, that I feel like Marvel, either way, is going to move forward with the Kang the Conqueror character. They're probably just going to recast him. I think it would be too big of a kind of a PR hit or maybe a, uh, a momentum kill if they had to change plans for Avengers Kang Dynasty. I'm not saying that it is impossible that they wouldn't do that. I mean, it's certainly possible. In fact, maybe Marvel, in doing their retooling, would maybe want to consider something like that and not have to, you know, pigeonhole themselves into doing a Kang Dynasty payoff. But I think that they're going to have a hard time working around all of these plot points that they very clearly set up even all the way back in Loki. You know, even if they don't use Kang the Conqueror, they're going to have to acknowledge he who remains and the multiverse and all of these other factors, you know, the post credit scenes of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania with Amortis and Rama Tut. I'm sure that they were going to do something with Rama Tut. Uh, you know, with the Fantastic Four or maybe with Moon Knight. So it's going to be a little bit hard for them to work around all this stuff, which is why I feel like I still am a little bit of a believer in this book and the strategy of averaging down. You know, I mean, that's something that a lot of people talk about when they're talking about dollar cost averaging into the stock market. You know, when you have a stock and you put a little bit of money into it, sometimes the stock goes down. And when the stock goes down, you know, you can dollar cost average into it and say, hey, you put a little bit more money aggressively into it. And then if it really, really crashes, you can once again, put even more money into it and ride that train 
all the way down to zero town. Just kidding. I mean, hopefully, eventually the stock will turn around. You know, these, this is principles that you would use, this dollar cost average principle and the aggressive nature that you want to take with it if it's a stock that you actually believe in. And for me personally, I still do believe in the Kang the Conqueror book because I am somebody who actually likes the character. I don't really have too much more to say, to be honest. I mean, those were my talking points. I was showing you guys the book I got. I didn't think too hard about it. it seemed cheap to me. Decided to buy it. And uh, I will probably continue to buy it if the price continues to go down. And I will basically continue to average down my cost basis into this book. And I'll sit on as many copies as I need to. What else can we talk about? You know, tomorrow, I think I'm going to be dropping the update for the comic book index. And we're going to see where we're at. Anecdotally speaking, in my opinion, I think the month of May has been a good seller's month. I actually think a lot of books have been moving. I think there have been some big, bigger sales for a lot of books. Because of the seasonality of comic books, I think that that's going to be true. But I do suspect there could be tough times ahead. So we will see. We will see. But with that out of the way, because I'm not going to talk about my other book that I purchased, and I'm running out of things to say, uh, I think I'm just going to wrap the video from here on out. What do you want from me, guys? They can't all be winners. Like, comment, subscribe. See you all in the next video.